What's going on, folks? Um, as you see, the video is probably lengthy. Uh, as I make it, I don't exactly know how long it's going to go. But um, people are real passionate about what's going on. And even I'm ramping up my videos, uh, getting back into the groove of things, and speaking my opinion what's on my mind. My thing is that if we're going to look at this situation, you know, people, <laughs> Drew Brees, the quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, made some comments that people uh, are saying are insensitive. And I will go on and say this, that I think the timing in what Drew Brees decided to make these comments were insensitive, could be deemed insensitive. I'm indifferent to it. I'm indifferent to what an NFL quarterback has to say about societal relations. And then I'm a vet, and I don't know if any of you all know, I'm a combat vet. I was there for the kickoff in 03. I was at FOB Spiker to crit Iraq, a hotbed, the second hotbed after Fallujah. And I've had conversations with people about this on the phone, via text, and uh, I, I, I tell them, I said, unless you've had bullets wheezing over you, let me just backtrack. You don't need to have bullets whizzing past your head. You don't need to be out on night missions, kicking in doors, driving over vehicles with people in them to accomplish that mission and not knowing what potentially happened to those people that you rammed to get to your objective. You don't need to go through that to have a sense of patriotism or, or um, wanting to see things maintained and fight, basically fighting for your country in which we enjoy the accolades of living in. You don't need to go through that, but it when I speak and I name those things and I, I identify those things in which I went through, pay homage. Pay homage to young men and women of all creeds and colors, religious backgrounds have gone through to avail you the opportunity to do what we've seen in the last week. combat vet and I don't tell people that I'm a combat vet I voice this on my on my uh, on my channel because this is my domain this is this this is an extension of my house so I can say what I want when I want you're here to listen to me I'm not sending this video to you you're here to listen to me and I'm grateful I'm hum. I'm. Uh, I'm I, um, you know, I feel a sense of humility for that, rather. But let me just say this. Uh, <sighs> With Drew Brees, like I said, the timing may have been offensive to say that, but he didn't say anything that was offensive to me. I'm indifferent to the flag. And I, I, let me just say this. Let me explain why I'm indifferent to the American flag. Because when you're in those trenches, when you're doing those things that I just briefly mentioned, you're not caring who's Republican, who's Democrat, who's black or white, Puerto Rican, Honduran, Filipino, 
you're just trying to get your troops home. And I've lost troops. I've lost about five guys that I drank with, that I went to the bars with, that I intimately knew in terms of their wives, their children, occasional girlfriends. I knew five guys that I can name immediately that died. I'm not even talking about the men and women that were maimed in that Iraqi war. Does that make me better than you? Does that make me more credentialed to speak? No, because I was there for those people who didn't endure those things can speak as well about any concerns they have via the protest. I am in support of protesting. That's why I did what I did, countless others. I don't support looting, which brings me to looting. Um, I'm going to dovetail off what Brother David Carroll has said, that we've been doing the same playbook for um, since the 50s. Longer than that, burning down our communities, and I'm speaking to black folks, burning down our communities, and what has changed? And I've talked about the playbook in the video before last. The video before the last one I did. I talked about the playbook. It doesn't change. Dive left, dive right, up the middle. It doesn't and hasn't changed. So all this fake outrage and I like I said I'll give this to about right before the playoffs in the NFL for all this to go away and I'll go so far as to say that hey if we're going to talk about stuff like this if you are so apt about change and about a, a new sense of direction and you're tired of white supremacy, and you're tired of, of, of injustices done to black people. I'm extreme. That's why I keep my mouth closed. I've said before in other videos of the past years back, I've said that integration was one of the worst things that happened to black folk. You're not going to find the end of racism in America. You're not going to find that here. The best chance you have, if you, if we, if you really to go that route, which is a route that I don't necessarily disagree with. And I'm going to dissect both, uh, uh, both premises off that. If, uh, if it's so hot in the kitchen in, uh, in America, hence the title, Go Back to Africa. But I'm taking a different spin. The spin is that if it's so hot, if you feel so done wrong, why don't you develop a nation outside of America? Because you're not going to get it here. You're not going to get an independent nation here in America as black folks. Why don't you go over to Africa, to the motherland, politic, make connections, network with people over there, who are not as convoluted, westernized as us here in the West, with people that look like you and develop your own nation. If it's, I'm just saying, if it's, if it's that hot over here in the kitchen, in America, if it's that hot, why don't you entertain that idea? Because you're not going to get an independent nation here. 
you're not going to find any type of solace, any type of um, empathy here. You're going to continue to have this in this fake outrage. Now, let me flip the, the coin on the other side. Me in particularly, painless, I think that this country is just as much as ours as the people we perpetrate that have stolen it and have benefited off the people that have built this country in a variety of ways. That's my thing. I was, you know, 98% of black folks aren't willing, they're not about that life, what I just mentioned. The former, about going and establishing a nation. And, and if it's so bad, <laughs> if it's so hot in this kitchen, go over and do those things which I just described. And of course, there's intricacies. It goes into more depth and detail on what needs to be done. But most black folks ain't about their life. They See, we want the, the accolades. We, we want the benefits of being in America. We want the comforts of being here in America. But still getting our behinds kicked. Or you can do what I mentioned, recognize that we have a just, a, is just as much as a big piece of the pie as the people that uh, purport this country to be solely theirs. And I've talked about black degenerative society in America. I had a brother, <laughs> had a brother deliver me a pizza. Now, I um, have had this certain company of pizza delivered to me, and every time I've had, uh, this is the first time I've had a brother deliver me a pizza. And you know, I opened up this door to this brother, and he just looked at me with that, I, I don't know what type of look, and I, like, look, brother, just do your job, give me my pizza, I gave you your gratuity, whatever. No, hey, how's it going, man? Got your pizza? He just looked with this lazy, shifty look that I despise from people that look like me. And I said, well, Thanks. And I shut the door in his, on his ass. Because I don't play that. You don't like your goddamn job? Quit. Go find another one. Now, you know, a lot of people, see, it's all about controlling your emotions. Which brings me to this next thing. All these people on social media, and I'm going to say this, folks. You need to divorce yourself a tad bit from social media because it'll bring you down. It'll have you feeling some type of way. And I see all these people on social media mad at the most, I mean, the most pettiest, non-trivial things. And I said that, on my last video about SJWs and in your feelings and how dare you have a different opinion against the status quo in terms of color. How dare, you know what? You know, I'm 41 years old. Many of y'all see me grow. I could give a damn what someone has to say about my opinion. I'm past that. All this Blackout Tuesday, putting a square up in your Facebook profile, stunting shit. Man, you know what? Miss me with that. Miss me with that symbolic 
bullshit that doesn't do anything. 1201, these Negroes is back on Facebook complaining and whining and mad about nothing. As I said, what happened to George Floyd, these people need to be held accounted for. I don't care what their title is. So happens to be police officers. They need to be held accountable. They need to be charged and judged. I'm not arguing. That's, that's not up for debate. I'm talking about the aftermath. You tripping off family because they ain't saying nothing. Silence is, is consent. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Just because, and I've said this, and it's like I told this 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 individual who, uh, like I said in the uh, beginning parts of this video, I've had conversations with people via text, on the phone. You know what? Hey, just because I ain't saying nothing about nothing doesn't mean I don't have feelings. I'm just not so much in my goddamn feelings to be blasting the shit all over social media. And like I said, in I say by playoffs, <laughs> if the NFL season going to conduct the way that it, it, it's scheduled, y'all going to forget about this shit. And then you're going to blow all your money on Christmas gifts, giving presents to people who don't deserve the shit. That's what's going to happen. This is the same playbook for everybody. Everybody. So stop the charades. Black folk, we love symbolism. And what has that gotten us? And like I said, 98% of black folks would not agree with what I say in concerning moving to the motherland. And if it's so hot, if the pot is so hot, if that shit burns so hot, if the kitchen is, is, is whoo, I got to get up out of here, whoo. Go back to the motherland, network with like-minded people, Carve you out a sector and start your nation where you ain't got to deal with the shit that you complaining and, and, and whining over. Everybody want to be cool and I'm, 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 I'm on the trend of, yeah, I can't breathe. Yeah, I'm down. You know what this has shown me? It just shows me that America is soft. America is a bunch of followers and clout chasers. No, no, no idea of individual thinking, and to stray from the to stray from the flock is exile. The scarlet letter. Well, you see, the thing with me is I don't mind wearing a scarlet letter. I could give up. You know what? care less. Y'all ain't ready to get up. Y'all not ready to give up Macedonia, a first missionary Baptist church? Put it this way, folks. And I just I told this girl this too. Because she told me about some stuff she was going through at work. She was talking about I had to leave work. And I, and I really got to asking, basically interviewing her. And I, I, I told her, why, at the end of the, why did you do that? Like, was it, you can't operate. But see, when I understand it's emotional, 
that all this shit is, and we're, we're humans, we get emotional, but there comes a time where you have to check your damn emotions as an adult, and I talked about my last video, when you got damn near, you got 47 year old men getting vandalism and disturbing the peace fucking charges. What is up with that? So you need to check your damn emotions. I don't care what's going on. Oh, I, I don't know if I could talk to a man that, you know, is not revealing his emotions. Well, you know what, check. I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm selective about, I pick my battles. And as a man, you definitely need to do that. And that's the crux of the problem. Many of us black men, we can't check our emotions. Because why? Many of us don't have the men that have, that are in, that should have been in our lives to, to teach us to control our emotions. We raised around women all goddamn day. You sit around women all day, all day. You teach as a woman. You got your mom, you're living with your grandma, with your mama, with her aunties, her kids, all her damn girls. And you just getting heavy doses of femininity and feminine energy. And you don't know how to deal. See, I grew up around men. I had a foot in my ass everywhere I turned. So this isn't necessarily, a, see, let me just say this. I'm going to say this about this George Floyd thing, and I'm going to try to leave that brother alone and let him rest. We're not dealing with racism. We're dealing with people with values and people without fucking values. That's what we're dealing with in America. I've told, I've talked about classism. I live right here in the South, in the, in, in the state in the South. And you know how many Caucasian meth head beggars on the corner I see? I see more of them than black people. Everywhere I turn, there's some white person begging for money to get some drink, to get some glass, which is meth. We're dealing with people who have values and morals and those who don't, those who think they're entitled and those who are willing to work. Is there racism? Absolutely. But overall, this is what we're dealing with. Hence in point, why do you think you see all, a lot of these protesters are Caucasian or some other ethnic group? I've talked about the Wall Street. Remember that Wall Street shit, the one percenters, and all these yuppie kids out here that squandered off their fucking parents' inheritance? Gauges, huge gauges all in the ear, nose ring, tattoos all over the face. Those same Caucasians come from wealthy families. They just thought it was cool. Oh, I'm going to rage the fucking machine. And you all fall for that. You think they're down for you. East St. Louis looters. North Houston looters. South Central looters. No. Because they can easily call mommy and daddy. If they want, if they haven't squandered off and fucked off too much. You, you're going right back to Decatur, East Atlanta, South Dallas, West Philly. That's where your ass is going back to. But carry on, carry on. But you know, I'm going to cut this video short. I'm about to do a little calisthenics and eat me uh, 
I don't know, maybe some scrambled eggs, some kimchi, take it light. And I'm going to chill, take a shower, and take my ass to bed, painless out.